Hey folks, it's Kurt from Whitetail's Deer Hunting. It's that time of the year. Leaves are popping, and it's time to start thinking about getting your trail cameras out in the woods. Today I'm going to show you guys what I do to get my cameras prepped and get them out so I can start taking pictures of deer. I got home from work, got a little bit of time for my daughter's lacrosse game, so I'm trying to get my cameras ready. It's uh, the beginning of May, so thought I'd just show you guys what I do to prep my cameras and how I put some information into my phone to make it easier to uh, go ahead and take care of them when I'm out in the field. Uh, I would imagine I'm pretty similar to most average hunters out there. Uh, I wish I was sponsored by Exodus and I uh, had eight or ten cameras out here of all the same brand, but as you can see by my pile here, even though I got ten cameras, I got five different types of cameras. Uh, right now I've only got one cell cam. I got a Tacticam that I used at the end of last season. I uh, really liked it and looking forward to being able to get some cellular pictures this year. Um, just a bit expensive, so I figured over the next couple of years I'll invest in a couple more cellular cameras. But you got to be careful as well because the more cellular cameras you buy, the higher your monthly plan is going to be to go ahead and get that data. So, you know, I think maybe three cameras, like 50 bucks a month, is probably about as far as I'm going to go with the cellular cameras. One of the things I want to show you today is uh, how I go ahead and get these prepped and put information into my phone. So what I'll do with each one of the cameras... First of all, check the straps, make sure the straps are in good shape. Uh, depending upon the tree, sometimes I'll use straps, uh, sometimes I'll use paracord. Just depends whether or not I think, in, I, think I can hide uh, the strap uh, around the tree. If I think it's a situation where the strap is going to be evident by the deer, then I may sit down and use some paracord. And uh, each one of my cameras that I have on public land, I've got cable locks. So there are times in which I don't need a strap, I don't need paracord, the cable lock is enough to go ahead and hold it on there. But if you've ever looked at the cable locks, they're kind of slick. So sometimes, depending upon the tree, for example, a beech, they wouldn't work at all with that uh, real smooth bark. Uh, sometimes they slip down. So I tend to make sure I have a strap with me and paracord just in case this cable lock is not going to be able to uh, hold the, tr hold the uh, trail camera up. Batteries, first of all, are really important that you have lithium batteries or some other type of high-end batteries that last as long as possible. Batteries that I have at the end of the season that are still in good shape, I actually put in Ziploc bags and take up and throw in one of the drawers in my uh, nightstand beside my bed. And that way there's a warm temperature all winter. Uh, cold temperatures tend to really kill batteries pretty quick. So I don't keep them in the garage or I don't keep them out in the shed or in the basement. Instead, I keep them right in the house with the heat. And I've found that it extends the life of those batteries quite a while. When you got 10 cameras out there and you're running eight batteries a camera, it gets pretty expensive real quick. So the more you can do to save the life of these batteries, the better. I'll go ahead and uh, I'll get these batteries in, first of all. Number one, to make sure that the batteries are working after sitting all winter if they're not brand new. And number two, I want to make sure the camera's working. I want to get back into the modes, I want to pop through it, make sure the date is set up appropriately. After I get the batteries in, I want to make sure I turn the camera on and just make sure it's working. This one turns right on, which is great. It still shows it's got four or five bars on the uh, battery strength, which is good because I use this one Got probably from July all the way until like mid-January last year, so batteries held up pretty good. Uh, this is a wild game innovation camera. I've had this camera actually for like 10 years, 8 or 10 years, and it's still working great. The quality of the pictures isn't perfect, but I just want to know what's out there, and um, that's really kind of cool. So what I end up doing on my phone is I open up my notes and I write down the name of the camera, the model of the camera, and then I start writing down all the important information on my camera so that when I get out into the field, depending upon which one of the five different brands of cameras I have, I've got a little cheat sheet there to help me remember how to change modes if something's not working right on that camera. I also pair up my SD cards and, uh, and I color code those SD cards so when they're paired up and they're color coded, 
That way I know that this card specifically works with only one camera and all I'll do is interchange these two batteries. Uh, some of my cameras have a little bit better resolution so I want a higher end card in some of those, especially the Tacticam and uh, a couple of Bushnells that I have, a Moultrie, a little bit higher end cameras, I want some higher end SD cards in those. After making sure that I have paired SD cards and I've got a cable and strap, uh, I sit down and look at some of the important information, whether or not it's got any glow on the camera, whether it's low glow or some of these new cameras I have that are no glow. The no glow cameras I'm primarily going to put on areas where I think I have some bigger, more mature bucks, especially on scrapes, trying to do the best I can not to spook them off of those scrapes. Uh, some of the ones that have a little bit of a flash I'll put further away from a trail uh, at a 90 degree angle to the trail to the direction that the deer are moving. And I usually put these trail cameras for me about seven feet up in the air. I usually take one climbing stick, get up there about seven feet, get that uh, camera onto the tree itself. I get it tilted so it's facing downwards a little bit. And I usually put a stick or some branches behind it. Not only does it give it that angle to angle down looking at the scrape or the trail uh, below me, but it also gives me the opportunity to put some sticks and branches behind it that hopefully will conceal it just a little bit uh, as opposed to just having it on the tree. Uh, it's really important that you make sure those cameras are concealed. If I can find a multi-trunk tree, it also helps to kind of uh, keep that camera camouflaged from deer that are passing around the side of it and may see it sticking off the front of that tree. So it's really important to do the best you can to camouflage it and I found some sticks and branches are a great way to be able to do that and give it a little bit of a three dimension or a little bit of side concealment when you're doing that. I mentioned that I go ahead and I put them about seven feet up in the air on public land and I always lock them. Uh, I was out on a scout about three weeks ago and came past probably a $200 uh, cellular camera that was at waist height, no lock on it. I'm that hunter that respects other people's equipment out in the woods, whether or not it's your tree stand, whether or not it's a trail cam or anything else. Everybody has a right to be on that public land and I don't mess with it. I just feel bad because there's enough people out there that somebody's going to end up lifting that camera in the long run. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't have an extra $200 laying around to lose a camera. So any of you that are putting cameras out on public land, I really highly suggest that you try and conceal them. You get them up a little higher and definitely always put a cable lock on them. It's going to end up saving you a lot of frustration in the long run, not only getting your pictures lost, but losing some money as well. Some of the important information that I go ahead and... Uh, I put into my phone so that I have when I get out in the field is the mode, is it photo or video, what's the resolution, what's the photo series, one, two, three pictures or video or both video and picture, uh, what's the video resolution, usually I do 1920 by 1080, um, video length 10 seconds, what's your shot lag, are you going to put the audio on or not, what's your sensitivity, uh, two things that I think are really important at the end is the time. Make sure you put the year on there, the month, and the day. I find it's easiest for me to organize by always putting year, month, and then day. It's just easier to find it when I drop all this stuff on the computer at a later time because all the 2021 information is in one place. The 2022 information is in one place. Your February is separate from your March. Just organization-wise, it makes it easier. I think it's also important to have a photo stamp on there, the time and the day, so you can see it on the picture. And it's really important that if you take batteries out and put batteries back in, that you go back and make sure you reset uh, the year and the date and the time. It's extremely important when you're looking at pictures to know when those deer are there. Uh, now, when you have a cellular camera, obviously it's easier because you can be getting that stuff live. But if you got these cameras that I have sitting out here that I'll put out in May and some of them I won't even go back in and check until the end of July, it'd be nice to know what was occurring you know, in the end of May and the middle of June and the end of July, uh, see whether I'm catching some of the same deer, or see some of their growth, uh, determine if their patterns are changing at all during that season and having the date and the time and the year on it uh, definitely helps with that a ton. 
and I always use a 24 hour format so that I have the military time. So if you look at 1532, that's 332 p.m., which is different from what you'd see with 332, which would be 332 a.m. So that 24 hour format is definitely a lot easier to use to be able to, to, be able to interpret the times. And if you have a camera that has a password protect on it, I really suggest that you use the password protect. It makes a big difference. It's just one more deterrent to keep people from stealing your cameras when you're out there in the field. So this is one that I did the other day. Uh, this is a Rexing camera that I have. And if you take a look, you can see that I've got all the information that's on this Rexing camera that's going to help me when I'm out in the field so that if I have to change anything on the camera, I've got this little cheat sheet on my phone. So this camera right here, I've got the, the batteries in right now. This is an older camera, so everything's right on the screen itself. Uh, it's got a lit up blue screen, which is easy to see. This does not have photos that you can look at in the field, so I actually have to take my SD card back. And like I said, I've got two SD cards for every camera that I only keep for that camera. So when I'm out in the field, I simply take the SD card out, put the new one in, go home, and I'm able to interpret what's on that SD card, save the videos and photos I want, and then delete it, reformat it, and have it ready to go for the next time I go out to change this same camera. This camera here, after hitting power, the first thing is the time and the date. Uh, trying to remember each one of these cameras is different. This one is just simply hit enter, and it allows you to change the time. So I look at my phone right here and it's 4.15, uh, there it is, 4. This is one of those older cameras where you can only go up, you can't go back down. Um, most of the ones I have now you can go both up or down. But I'll set the time to start, uh, move on to the next mode that you see right there. It says day, uh, today is the 5th. Uh, it gives me month when I take a look at. We are in May, year 2022. And then I can go ahead and put a name into this camera right now. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to put this camera yet, so I'm not going to put the name in for this camera. I'll go ahead and put this name in when I'm out in the field. For the PIR mode on this older camera, I'm going to hit video because for the most part, that's what I want to be able to see. Uh, skip down to activity. I want it to be 24 hours so I get day and night pictures. Uh, the sensitivity, I put it medium. The exposure, I put it high. Uh, picture, I put it regular instead of wide. The resolution at medium. And the delay I have, which I do on most everything, is 15 seconds. So everything that I have for this camera right now, I've set. Once I do this with a camera, I make sure not to turn that camera off again. Otherwise, you got to go back and rechange the date and the time and the year. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and set this camera right now and uh, hit power. And this camera is ready to go. Now, the only thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go back and I'm going to input all this information for this Wild Game Innovations camera uh, into my phone so that if I go back out and I don't have the manual, there in front of me like I do for this Bushnell one uh, that I can go ahead and use my cheat sheet on my phone to go ahead and make the changes I need on the, on the camera itself while I'm in the field. So all together I got 10 cameras. I've already got one out on the field uh, in an area on the farm that I hunt where I just end up putting a 110 gallon water trough. I'm going to go in next week and get a grapevine mock scrape put on there. So I just want to put that camera out here for a month or two uh, to see uh, any deer come around start using that water hole or that mock scrape that are new. Uh, for the most part now I've got three cameras that I already have set up and ready to go. So it's just going to take some time to get the other seven cameras uh, set up, make sure the batteries are working, make sure the camera still works, make sure I have the SD cards and make sure I've put all the appropriate information into my phone. And then it's time to set up a plan and figure out how I'm going to get the cameras out in the field. I'm still in the garage here, slowly working on getting cameras prepped uh, to get them out here the middle to end of May. I had a little bit of an issue with uh, getting my Fortress lock on the bottom of my Tacticam box right here. That hole was too small to fit the rubber coated top that goes on this Fortress lock. So I had to cut that rubber coated top off and uh, camouflage it up so now it'll fit in there. 
You got one camera I'm gonna be working on here. The Tacticam's ready to go. I got three more cameras there that I still have to work on. Uh, then over here, I've got three cameras right now that I'm testing. I always put them out for 24 hours so that I can get an idea of whether or not they're working correctly at day and night. Had a little bit of an issue with this one at nighttime, so I'm going ahead, put some new batteries in, changed some settings, formatted the SD card. We'll see if that works, and now I get some nighttime pictures of that camera right there. And then, like I said, that Tacticam I just showed you is ready to go. This camera is ready to go. So hopefully, middle to end of May, I'll have all the cameras out, and then it's fun going back out there on rainy days and starting to collect some data by seeing what deer are out there. Um, just fun being in the woods, doing some off-season work. Well, I pretty much have all of my cameras prepped and ready to go. One of the things I think I'm gonna change up is uh, I think I'm gonna remove all of the straps from all the cameras. And I think I'm going to go to something different that I've been taking a look at on a lot of guys' YouTube channels. And that is instead of using straps, uh, going ahead and using paracord. This gives you an idea of the same camera right here. And I do have my cable lock on it. But what a difference it makes with the size of the strap versus the size of the paracord. And I think that's going to make a huge difference to have the camera be just a a bit less noticeable when it's in the tree, not only by people coming by, but also by deer. So we'll give it a shot when we get out in the field. We'll see if it works. If not, this is all about experimenting and figuring out what works and what doesn't work. I'm still working on getting my cameras prepped to get out. Uh, I've checked eight of the 10 cameras and uh, they all seem to be working well. Checked both SD cards in each camera. I did find one SD card that I think is bad, so uh, I went ahead on Amazon Prime and ordered two new ones. Uh, two more cameras I'm just checking overnight tonight to make sure that the second card works. And here I am now out uh, spraying each one of these cameras. Uh, I've sprayed my hands off. I've already sprayed a backpack. And as soon as I spray these a couple of times with the O2 spray, I'm gonna get them put in the backpack and uh, the backpack's gonna stay here in the edge of the garage closed up until I get ready to put these out here in another week or two. And then last minute, I'll spray everything down again before I go out. Once I get it up in the tree, I'll spray it down as well. I'm trying to reduce as much human scent as I possibly can in these cameras. And then uh, when I take them out, uh, I'll have another video for you guys of uh, how I set the cameras up out in the field. Uh, for the most part, I've got three main areas that I'm going to hunt, uh, or I plan to hunt. So for me, using the cameras over the summertime is going to give me that opportunity to take a look at those hunting areas and really determine, based on what I see on the camera, where those places are that I think I'm going to spend most of my time hunting in the fall. I will plan a day in the next two to three weeks to get out. Um, Look at the weather forecast. I like to have rainy days to get my cameras out so I reduce my scent in the woods. I do the same thing in the summertime when going to check SD cards. I won't go out and check those SD cards unless it's a wet day and it's reducing my scent. So I hope this helped you guys out a little bit as you get ready to prep your cameras to get out on public or private land. I'm looking forward to get cameras out and start getting pictures. Already getting excited for the fall and can't wait to see some of these bucks grow through velvet all the way uh, from now until August, September, October, and when it's time to be out in the woods hunting. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys like it. Please subscribe, Whitetails Deer Hunting. This is Kurt saying, see ya.